This video is all about adding gas as you change up gears or flipping the throttle. Why would you want to do this and how do you do it? This video is following on from my previous video, which was all about rev matching. Link to that video somewhere up there. I recommend watching that video first as watching that will help you understand this one better. When you change gear, sometimes the car may be a bit jerky. Uh, it's a lot more noticeable on down changes, which was what my last video was all about, but it can also happen on up changes and blipping the throttle a little bit can sometimes solve that issue. In my last video, I mentioned that when you're off the gas, your clutch finds it much easier to bring engine speed down than it does to bring engine speed up. And that's really important because this hand represents your gear speed and this hand represents your engine speed. Your clutch has a job, and its job is to match these two speeds when they're not the same. So, you go up one gear. When you go up a gear, your gear speed will go down, but your engine speed will go down as well. That's handy, but it goes down a bit too much. There's a difference there. They're at a different speed. So your clutch now has to match them together, and one way you can do this is by lifting the clutch to the bite point, holding it on the bite point, and the engine speed will gradually go up, but also bring the gear speed down a little bit, so your car will be slowing down until they're matched. And you have to hold it on the bite point for that to happen. If you were to come off the clutch suddenly, your engine speed will go up quickly, which will jerk the car suddenly like that, which is not nice. And that's the whole point in this video, is to avoid that jerk. There is another way around this though. What you can do is, when you change up a gear, so your gear speed goes down, and then your engine speed goes a little bit lower typically, you can add some gas. So add some gas and hold the gas pedal. So now your revs are a little bit higher, which is handy. You're never gonna get them exact, let's be honest. They're gonna be a bit, a bit higher or a bit low. So let's assume they're a bit high because going a bit higher is normally better. And now you bring the clutch up to the bite point, except your clutch now actually has a harder time rev matching because you're putting power through the engine. So now your clutch has to literally fight the engine to bring the engine speed down, but you're giving gas, the engine speed wants to stay up. So what typically happens is your gear speed goes up and your engine speed comes down a little bit and they kind of meet in the middle. What's great about that is you do continue to accelerate whilst you're doing your pedals when you change up a gear. The problem with that is you've got to be on the bike point for a long time still. A quick way of doing it is like this. You're in gear and you want to go up a gear. So you go up a gear, your gear speed goes down and your engine speed goes down a little bit too much like normal. And what you do is you blip the throttle, you blip the gas and bring the engine speed up a bit too high like this. And then you come off the gas and now the engine speed starts to fall. And as it starts to fall, you come off the clutch. And because the engine speed is already going in the correct direction, it's really easy for your clutch to bring that engine speed exactly to where the gear speed is and lock them together without any jerkiness going through the car. So long as you don't give a massive amount of gas, because yes, the clutch is gonna struggle to match a massive difference. But if it's roughly right, you should be able to come off the clutch without pausing at all, and it will be perfectly smooth. Then you can get back on the power to carry on accelerating. So here's a demonstration of how I would do the throttle blip up change. I'm not moving, the engine's not on. I'm gonna put it in second gear. I'm gonna show you how I'll go to third gear. I will do a moving example soon, but I thought it'd just be easier to explain this when I'm not moving to begin with. So, I'm on the gas, I'm driving down the road, nice and happy, in second gear, and I want to go to third gear. So what I do is I come off the gas and clutch down, go up a gear, in this case, up one gears to third, and before I come off the clutch pedal, I want to blip the gas pedal. So what I do is I blip it like that and I'm pushing it about that much and I'm pushing it for about that long. It's just a moment, I'll show you. I'll do, I'll do my hand at the same time as my foot, like that. And that, in this car, tends to bring the revs up just enough so I can come off the clutch like this. You want to come off the clutch the moment you come off the gas though. Don't leave it too long and don't come off the clutch whilst you're still on the gas because that'll make the jerk a whole lot worse. So I'll show you that again in second. I'm on the gas, happily driving down the road. I come off the gas, clutch down into third gear, a little blip of the gas, then off the clutch like so. I'm not gonna come off the clutch like this, because if you do it like that, you're just asking for trouble. But I'm not gonna have to carefully come off the clutch and pause on the bike point to make sure it's smooth. Generally, come off the clutch at this speed. I'll show you that again, that sort of speed. And it's smooth. 
So now I'm going to show you in my Say It Lay On 1.4 turbo petrol how I change up gears using the throttle blip method. As it is a turbo, you generally have to give a little bit more gas for a bit longer because the throttle response on turbo cars isn't as good as cars without a turbo. It takes a little bit longer to rev up. So I'm going to set off now and show you what I do. I'm in first gear. I'm going to go to second gear soon. So to do that, I come off the gas, clutch down into second, quick blip of the throttle, and I come off the clutch pretty quickly without any jerkiness. I didn't drop the clutch suddenly, but I came off relatively quickly. I want to go from second to third now. So off the gas, clutch down, quick throttle blip, and I can I pretty much dropped the clutch that time and it was still very smooth. I don't recommend dropping the clutch that quick because if your revs are a bit too far out, it could still be a bit jerky. You're better off playing it safe and coming off the clutch about that sort of speed. I'm going to, I'm going to go to fourth soon. So again, off the gas, clutch down, little throttle blip and pretty much drop the clutch. The higher your gear is, so if you're say changing from fourth to fifth, you're going to need a very small throttle blip. Uh, if you're in lower gear, say from first to second, you need a slightly bigger throttle blip. This time I'm gonna show you the other method where you hold the gas on and bring the clutch up to the bike point. I prefer this method if I'm in a car I really don't know and I don't know how sensitive the gas is because it's more of a safe way of doing it, but it does take longer, which is why once I know a car really well, I'll go with the blip method instead. So this is what I'll do. I'm in first gear to move away, just gonna move away now. And I will change to second gear. And to do that, I'll come off the gas, clutch down in the second, hold the gas on slightly, hold the bite point gently, and then come off the clutch completely. So it took a lot longer, it was definitely smooth, and if I didn't know the car, I would do it that way. So I'm gonna to go to third gear now, off the gas, clutch down into third, little bit of gas, bring the clutch to the bite point, hold on the bite point for a second, then come off, and the car doesn't slow down. It can accelerate a little bit if you give a bit more gas, but it does take a while, as I've already said. To be honest, once you're up to third gear, you don't really need either of those methods. So going from first to second and second to third, yes, one of those methods is really gonna help you be smooth. But once you're changing up to fourth and above, it's already quite smooth without any help from you because the gears at that speed don't have much torque. So you can come off the clutch fairly quickly without the car slowing down and without it jerking. So now we're in my Vauxhall VX220. At least that's what it's called in the UK. Everywhere else in Europe, it's called the Opel Speedster. And this does not have a standard engine. This has a very modified engine. Pretty much everything's been changed. And even the head and the block come from two different engines. It's got no balancer shafts and the flywheel is light. So therefore it revs up very quickly and it, the revs drop very quickly, which makes it quite hard to change gears smoothly, especially upshifts become a bit more jerky than normal unless you're really careful of how much gas you give. So throttle blipping when I change up in this car makes my life smoother and easier. So I'm going to show you how that works in this car. I generally rev it a little bit more, this engine. It hasn't got much torque, although it hasn't got much weight. I don't really need to rev it, but just nicer to drive that way. So I'm going to get going in first gear and I'll change to second gear soon. So off the gas, clutch down, quick blip of the throttle, and there we go, change gear. Those revs want to drop really quickly. So being able to throttle blip makes my life a lot easier. I'll do that again into third, off the gas clutch down, blip of the throttle and come off the clutch. Pretty much dropped the clutch there. Felt like I got the revs just about right. So I was quite confident coming off the clutch quickly. And going up to fourth, probably not needed, let's see. So just off the gas, clutch down into fourth and clutch up, yeah, not needed at all. There's no torque in fourth gear. So the clutch can bring those revs down really easy without slowing the car down. And if I want to go down a gear, well then I have to rev match with the gas pedal, which is quite fun in this car. Makes a good sound. This car has a very primitive fuel injection system on purpose and it's actually cost quite a lot of money to make it that way. The system that it had from new was much better. And you're probably thinking, why on earth would you do that? And that's because there was an advantage with older cars. Older cars, older systems, carburetor or early fuel injection systems had better throttle response. So when you press the gas pedal, the gas would 
the, the engine speed will go up a lot quicker. It was much easier to maintain minimal amounts of revs as well. Quite often in a modern fuel injection car, you press the gas, there's a bit of a delay, then it goes up and it goes up too much. It's hard to keep the revs very low in a modern car and it makes it more pleasurable to drive. Also, older engines make a, a really good sound. So I'm telling you this so that you know, if you're driving an older car or a car on carburettors or early fuel injection, Alpha N mapping is what it's known as, with throttle bodies where the distance between your intake and your engine's about that much, you're not gonna have to blip the throttle as hard or for as long. You can give a very little tap and the engine speed will come up very quickly. Something worth bearing in mind if you get an older car so you don't end up giving an awful lot of reps. And now just for my own fun, I'm going to move away and give a few more revs. Only four. That sounds good. So now I'm in a Fiat 500X. This is a 1.6 turbo diesel. Uh, this engine can be found in various Fiat's and Alfa Romeo's and they do them in some GM products like uh, Vauxhall, Chevrolet, Opal, etc. Um, and this is very different to the other two cars I was just driving. A big problem with diesels is the throttle response is very slow. If you blip the throttle, not a lot's happening at all, whereas in my other two petrols there, the revs would have gone up a lot more. But there is an advantage for diesels and that is how easy it is to control the throttle. So if you just wanna increase the revs by a small amount, a diesel's very easy. Like I've just increased them up to a thousand there. That'd be really hard in most petrols. I can go a little bit more. I can put the revs much more easily up until you get to about 2000. I don't know if you notice that, but once I start getting above one and a half, it starts getting harder as the turbo starts to make it shoot up but for low revs it's actually quite easy to keep a diesel exactly where you want it which makes moving away a bit easier and that's one of the reasons why diesels can be a bit easier to learn in petrols and diesels both have their advantages with this car you don't really need to do a blip either because the rev the revs drop so damn slowly that you have time to actually put it in gear and bring the clutch back up again. As long as you're quick doing that, clutch down into gear, clutch back up pretty quick. The revs haven't had a chance to drop very low because they go down quite slowly. So blipping the throttle in this car is probably, well, it's not necessary. If you were in a diesel where it was necessary, you would have to blip for a bit longer because it takes longer for those revs to go up. And if you do too much, it's hard because they then go flying up way too much. Anyway, I'm waffling. So I'm gonna show you how I do it in this car. So I'm gonna move away. Uh, automatic handbrakes, don't have to worry about that. And I'm gonna go up a gear, so off the gas, clutch down, change gear, and it was smooth. I don't know if the revs went a bit too low and the clutch had to bring it up, but I barely felt anything at all there. Let's do it again to third gear, didn't need to blip the throttles. So off gas, clutch down, clutch up, there you go. The revs are still higher. It takes too long for the revs to come down, so in this car, it's not needed. Goes to show that you can't, all, you can't drive all cars the same. You do have to learn each individual car characteristics and just understand them to be able to get the most of them. Manual anyway, an automatic, you don't need to worry about this stuff. If you noticed, I said diesels can be easier to learn in and that's not really true. What I meant by that is the gas pedal can be easier to control in the diesel. I've taught people in diesels for five years and petrols for six years and I am sticking with petrol these days because on the whole, I find petrols easier. And some petrols do actually have still quite a nice throttle response. It does depend on which one you get. I was helping a lady in a Mazda 2, not long before lockdown, and she was really struggling to move away without giving too many revs and I was thinking, how is she struggling this much for this long? So I hopped in the car and had a drive and thought, oh, it's not her, it's the car. Press the gas a little bit, the revs go up to two, two and a half. You couldn't have less than that. So you know, that's not an ideal car to learn in as far as that's concerned. In fact, it's a bit hard to drive in general. What you've got to do in that situation, if you've got a car where the revs just keep flying up all the time, you have to be quite good at driving. And as you press the gas, you've got to lift the clutch at the same time because lifting that clutch will restrict the revs from flying up so much. Much harder for a new driver, but definitely doable for a more experienced driver. Well, I hope this video helps you change up gears more smoothly. If you think it will, please give the video a thumbs up and check out my sponsors 
in the description, collingwoodandconfused.com. Collingwood are great if you want to insure yourself on somebody else's car for, say, learning to drive or extra practice, because you can do so without affecting their policy, which takes away a lot of stress from the owner of that vehicle can make learning a bit easier. Also, using the link in the description gives you a benefit. There is a benefit for you there. I believe at the moment it's vouchers for Amazon, but it does change. So if you watch this video in a year's time, it might be different and it does support this channel. If you want to insure your own car, Confused.com are very competitive, not only for new and inexperienced drivers, but I find for everyone, I can quite often get one of the cheapest or the cheapest prices from them. So checking them out should hopefully get you a good deal, but also that will support the channel too. If you wanna get my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio.